This is probably one of Project Veritas's most important stories. It's not about Google or other massive multinational billion dollar corporations. It's not about politicians and the policies they put in place. This is about a high school teacher. That's it. Just a high school teacher. And I'll tell you why it's probably one of the most important stories. Because we know, or at least we've suspected to a great, with a, degre- a great degree of accuracy, that teachers in these schools are trying to indoctrinate your kids into radicalized and extremist thinking. These people would see the country burn to the ground and millions dead or suffering. Now, perhaps they won't admit to it, or they'll say something like, real communism has never been tried. But in this video, a simple undercover recording shows a high school teacher in California admitting to communist indoctrination of students, admitting that when children see the Antifa flag, that one child was, was offended by it. And he says, well, then maybe you shouldn't be a fascist. He didn't say it like that. He said, maybe you shouldn't align with values this flag is antithetical to. Maybe you shouldn't be a crackpot extremist radicalizing children. You see, this teacher is telling kids uh, or, or essentially to be extreme, to engage in further and further left extremist ideology. You know, let's be honest, though. It's one teacher. Is it indicative of the entire country? Not necessarily. But this is a California teacher. And I think what we see here goes beyond just the teacher. You want to know why California is a failed state? Well, let's be fair. There's some natural disasters going on. And I think a lot of that has to do with with failed policy to a certain degree. But you also just have failing leadership. When you have children who are being raised by these lunatics, and they are, they're being taught by them, and parents who don't care, Don't be surprised when the next generation runs the state into the ground and just destroys it. California, my friends, is a failed state for a variety of reasons. And I want to talk about that. But this is why I think the story from Veritas is so important, because the children will inherit the country, the earth. We are not here forever, right? We all inherited something from somebody, be it the roads that we walk on, the bridges we cross, the government in place. And eventually we will find ourselves as the elders and there will be children come to inherit what we inherit, what we leave behind. And this man is one of many we've seen seeking to indoctrinate children so they will destroy everything. I got a text message from the ACLU the other day. And they said, school's starting. Listen to our podcast with Kimberly Crenshaw, the identitarian. That's right. One of uh, the woman who coined critical race theory, which is the racist identitarian ideology. Now, of course, the left would say it's simply an overview of where the law intersects with race. Yeah, that's 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 just not true. Read what Kimberly Crenshaw actually says about this stuff. Critical race theory was named as such so that people would understand it's rooted in Marxist thought of oppressed and oppressor. It's not about the intersection of law. That's a lie. They can say whatever they want. We know what they're doing to kids. Here's the story from Project Veritas. Pro Antifa high school teacher in California admits communist indoctrination of students. I have 180 days to turn them into revolutionaries. Other teachers on the same page. There is a reason why these kids are becoming further and further left. And I want want to point something out. As we see this man in the in the, you know, from the Natomas Unified School District in Sacramento, I want to keep you I want to remind you that the Sacramento Unified School District is where they are implementing white racial affinity groups. That's right. I want to point out that it's more than just this one teacher. He says it's many other teachers. And I want to point out it's the parents who don't care about their kids. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not here. I'm not here to placate anybody. I'm not here to pander to anybody. Nope. I say it last night in the Timcast IRL uh, member segment. I've said it a million times. The people responsible for the fascistic mandates in New York City are the mom and pop shops, the regular working class people who stand behind these scumbags and say, I'll uphold this. And right now, I'll tell you who I'm mad at. The parents who are not talking to their children, who are not raising their children, who are saying, go to school. And too much, too often, I hear it, where the kid comes back and says, but my teacher's crazy. My teacher hates me. And they're like, that's not true. You're just not doing your work. No, it is true. Often, there are some good teachers out there, 
But this is an example of what your children are being put through, and you need to pay attention. Stop thinking that an institutionalized learning facility will give your kids good values. Veritas reports, Project Veritas released shocking new video today of a California AP government teacher, Gabriel uh, Geip, boasting about politically indoctrinating his students. Geip said that his intention is to radicalize students into supporting Marxist ideas by using the public school system as an avenue to incentivize them to participate in fringe extracurricular activities. I have 180 days to turn them into revolutionaries, scare the F out of them. I post a calendar every week. I've had students show up for protests, community events, tabling, food distribution, all sorts of things. When they go, they take pictures, write up a reflection. That's their extra credit. These kids' grades are dependent upon engaging in psychotic cultist behavior with this teacher. And how many parents don't care about their kids? Sorry, no, they don't care about their kids. But I have a job. You know, I, I, I have to. I, what's more important? I, don't, I, I, I just, you know what? You know what I was talking about the other day on the, on the, on, on the uh, IRL podcast watching Fast and Furious. That's right. The, 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 the Fast and Furious cinematic universe. And boy, did, was there a profound statement in the, in the fourth installment called Fast and Furious in it. The bad guy named Reyes in Rio is talking to some guys and he says, you know, I don't want to work with you because your methods are too violent. And when you engage in violence, you back people into corners and they have nothing left to lose and they fight back. He says, that's not what we do. We give them something to lose. We bring in the goods, the air conditioning and the water and the food. Then they've got something to lose and then we own them. And that's what we're facing. Parents who would say, I don't know what else to do. I have to go to work to support my family. You know, what's more important? I think back to those who had less to lose back before all of these creature comforts and wonderful technology and television and air conditioning. People who lived out in the middle of nowhere and built log cabins and said, I'm going to do right by my children. Today, you have people saying, I would do right by my children if I could, but you know, I work at a corporate office and I don't have time to be there for my kids. Someone's got to pay for the food and you could move somewhere, take a lower salary and it might suck and I get it, but you are not on the verge of death. You are in one of the wealthiest countries on the planet. You would leave your children to men like this. I'm sorry. I get the hardship, you know, but if you're going to leave your children to this man, do you really care about them? You can say you're doing everything in the world. I get it. But I look at it this way. If I had to go to work and they said someone I cared about, I know I don't have kids. I get it. But they said someone I cared about was walk, was about to be trapped in a burning building. I would leave my job. And if they and, 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 if, and if they said, you know, someone you care about, because let's be let's be honest, that's a, your, your boss would probably be like, no, I get it. Go home. If they said this psychopath is going to be the one watching your children unless you leave. I'd, I'd rather just leave. And I, 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 you know what I'd say? Maybe this is why you need two parents. Someone can look after the kids and make sure these lunatics aren't manipulating your children. It's th their grades are dependent upon being extremists. Would you, would you really leave someone in the care of this lunatic? Or would you do whatever you had to do to protect your kids? That's why I'm sorry. I think some people, it, it's action, actions speak louder than words. I'll put it this way. I, I, I often would tell the story about how people would email me saying, I really want to do what you do. Back when I was working at Vice Infusion, traveling the world, covering these stories, being on the ground, facing real danger, but getting the story out. And when I told them what you needed to do, you know, actually travel to these countries, the risks, they immediately said, oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, I just wanted to be on TV. Yeah, actions speak louder than words. They can say whatever they want. I don't care. You can come to me and say, I do care about my family, but I have to have a job. And I'll say, that's fine. I don't care. Because if you really cared about your children, you'd find another way. Maybe people just don't understand. I don't know. But it's really about priorities. Your suffering and hardship or the betterment of your children. I'll, I'll, I'll put it another way. When I worked at O'Hare at American Eagle Airlines, there were several men who worked they worked uh, 16 hour days every single day until it's like once every two weeks, you're forced to take a day off by law. 
And so there was one guy who worked. He worked, what, 13 days on, one day off. I think that's what it was or something like that. It was ridiculous. And the way he did it was you could trade days. The union negotiated the system where I could log in and then just trade a shift. It was actually pretty cool. So there were a lot of these guys. They would just work nonstop. You, you, they were always there. And I remember there was one guy who was forced to take a vacation and he got really angry. He was like, you can't make me take vacation. Like, yes, we can. We legally have to. And he was pissed. You know why he worked every single day, 16 hours? Because he was a Filipino immigrant and he had kids. And he says, my kids will have a better life than me. And that means I will come here and I will work 16 hours every single day to get them what they need. Now I get it. He was leaving his children in the hands of these teachers and everything like and, and things like that, which is the point I'm trying to make is this guy was willing to do whatever it took, no matter how hard it was to make sure his kids had a better future. But I, I, I firmly believe if they understood what this is, he would have immediately said, I would rather spend time with my kids because this is not a better future for them. Here's what, here's what he writes. Here's what, here's what he said. They take an ideolo- ideology quiz. I put the results on the classroom wall. Every year they get further and further left. I'm like, these ideologies are considered extreme, right? Extreme times breed extreme ideologies, right? There's a reason why Generation Z, these kids, are becoming further and further left. I have an Antifa flag on my classroom wall, and a student complained about that. He said it made him feel uncomfortable. Well, this Antifa flag is meant to make fascists feel uncomfortable. So if you feel uncomfortable, I don't really know what to tell you. Maybe you shouldn't be aligning with the values that this flag is antithetical to. It's antithetical to freedom. That's what it's antithetical to. He actually says hyper individualism is bad. What can we do now to root out this culture that keeps perpetuating hyper individualism, hyper competitiveness, capitalist exploitation and consolidation of wealth? I do think that it's important to understand that as an extension of an economic revolution, the Chinese Communist Party were changing the base and then they went to change the superstructure. You cannot change one without the other. You can't have cultural shifts without economic shifts. He is advocating, defending, placating genocide that occurred in the Cultural Revolution and the struggle sessions and the tens of millions dead in China. So I'm sorry. I don't care if you're mad at me saying, Tim, you don't understand. You don't have kids. I understand I don't have kids and I can understand it can be hard. But I also know I would never leave my kids with someone like this. So what happens? California is a failed state. And this is exactly why. This is exactly why. Now, look, let's be real. How many of you who have kids are liberals who support this stuff? Probably not a lot of you, because even if you are finding yourself as a traditional liberal, you're like, this stuff's gone too far. So you're not sitting there agreeing with all this stuff for the most part. I mean, some of you might be. I don't know why you watch this channel because I'm ragging on this stuff all the time. But I think most people who watch this get it. And I'm not talking about conservatives who have kids who are keeping their kids away from this stuff and teaching their kids properly. And I'm talking about classical liberals, libertarians, ANCAPs, and everybody else. I'm talking about the California Democrat voter that doesn't care their kids are sitting and rotting in this stuff, even if they're unhappy. When these kids grow up, here's what you get. Let me show you a bit about what's happened in California. I'm not going to blame the natural disasters necessarily on policy, right? California has got this, this uh, massive wildfire and, and, and evacuation. It's potentially going to be leading to rolling blackouts. You've also got the drought. And I saw this video earlier. Let's talk about California. Your children are everything. Children are the future. It's not, it's not, some, it's not some cliche. It's not some joke. It's, the, it's tr- truth. Kids grow up. You die. They're the ones who remain. They have kids, etc. And every year they're further and further left. Here's a video. Amber Joe Cooper. Imagine having to choose between taking a shower or doing your laundry. Californians don't, Californians don't have too much longer. It's happening. Thanks, Gavin Newsom. Vote yes to recall Gavin. Well, let me just say yes, you should vote to recall Gavin. But this video is actually very fascinating because in the video, this, uh, I know- this woman talking about how there's going to be a restriction on how much water you can use by 2025. You will be able to use 52.5 gallons of water water a day. This is the perfect example of why California is a failed state, why I'm not here to pull any punches and I'm not going to defend anyone in California. Amber Joe Cooper saying vote yes on Gavin. Well, that's great. 
But does she explain to people why they're going to be restricting water? It's because California is a large mess. It is tens of millions of narcissists and egotists who don't recognize your state is collapsing completely and no recall necessarily will save this. Or maybe it will, to be honest. But the idea that you're going to come out and be like, we should be allowed to have unrestricted use of water in California. Sorry, your state will collapse. It's in a drought. Water levels are lower than ever. And I'm not going to blame Gavin Newsom because it stopped raining. That's stupid. But I will say this. When the argument is either we shut the water off or, uh, you know, we restrict the water or we recall the governor so that we can have unrestricted unrestricted water, I'm like, y'all in that state have lost the plot. There's a drought. California is heavily dependent upon Colorado water. So I said, I tweeted a while back, we literally flush fresh water down the toilet. The video doesn't explain why they are restricting water. California is a failed state and is currently unsustainable. There's too many people. There's not enough water. Los Angeles, Southern California is a desert, basically. But they bring in water from the Colorado River, and that helps sustain them because they have a treaty. If they didn't have a treaty, there'd be nothing there. Yet people keep moving there in, in a massive, massive metropolitan block. You ever been to L.A.? Man, you got it is one big urban. It's, it's a massive. There's no suburbs. There's no trees. It's just buildings for like 100 miles or something. No joke. It's massive. L.A. itself is just this tiny little city, but L.A. County is massive. It's huge. How are they going to sustain that? So they said, OK, we don't have enough water and these droughts are destroying us. We're going to have to tell the people in the cities it's a drought. Stop taking showers. What do we get? People are upset about it. So that's what you get with the average Californian. I think there's too many people, even even the blue, the, the blue city Republicans who still are fairly liberal, don't understand. California is a failed state. Up north, things are a lot better. But it's really interesting when I hear from people and they're saying things like, oh, why don't we just take water from the Delta? And it's like, because that would cause the ocean water to flood in because you would reduce pressure from the Delta, which pushes the brackish water out. And then it would just destroy the bay. So you, you, you can't do much. Ultimately, what needs to happen is people need to get out of cities, get away from these places. But here's the issue with California. Even the people in California who claim to be fighting back against Gavin Newsom still don't understand the problems and what's happening. And it's probably because even when you get some kind of resistance, it's people who are indoctrinated by these crackpots in these schools. So they grow up with warped perspectives that, I'm sorry, make no sense. I think Gavin Newsom should be recalled. I don't think that the restricting of water is necessarily the, 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 the wrong move. But I think there's a lot of other solutions that could have happened first. And I ultimately think people need to recognize overpopulation is an issue, but not necessarily in the way you think. What's the issue with overpopulation? How about in hyper concentrated areas like L.A., New York and Chicago, you have too many people all taking dumps in the same spot, all drinking water from the same spot. So the Great Lakes start receding, going down lower and lower because they're not being replenished. So you got to have some agreement. The Great Lakes Coalition says, yo, we got to stop using this water. But there's too many people. People need you got so much space in other 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 places. You got Wyoming. You got Montana. You got West Virginia. You got Colorado. Who wants to live in Colorado? People could spread out and take responsibility for themselves. But now I want to throw it back to what Veritas is reporting on. This guy, hyper competitive, hyper individualism, the world this man wants is where all of the people are regimented in a tight space and are destroying and extracting everything like a machine, like the Borg in Star Trek. You know what the better way of living is? Decentralized, small spread out towns that have their own water reclamation plants, creating better stability with with humans and the environment around them because there's less strain on any one area, less conflict, less chaos, less violence less density, more individualism, more personal responsibility. Instead, you know, so, so I'll, look at, I'll, I'll say this, that is the libertarian, that, that is my libertarian dream, be it left or right. In a left libertarian little dream, you can have your little town of a couple hundred people, and then your neighbors can do whatever they want, and you'll have some kind of agreements between the, between the two. 
This guy, he wants centralized state power. He wants your kids to be zealots, to march forward, guaranteeing these, 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 this extremism, which will ultimately lead to the death of millions. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in California with their uh, recall election. Currently, 538 says that the, the uh, keep Newsom is at 50.6% and remove is at 46.3. But who knows? I have no idea. So I'll tell you this. Voting yes to recall Newsom is the right idea. But I think California is a failed state no matter what you do, to be honest. Now, Larry Elder may come in. There is this other guy. They're saying meet Kevin, who's polling really, really well. He might come in. And they might make some serious changes. I think Larry Elder is probably the best bet. We'll see how that rolls out. In the end, I don't know if California can be saved. Too many people, too many people, people need to spread out. I covered a lot, a lot of what's going on in California, but let me just stress this for the rest of the country. If you let this man and people like him teach your, your children and you don't pay attention, your kids will become psychopaths who hate your guts. Like that viral story where the guy says, my daughter went to college and when she came back, she had purple hair and she said she hated me. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.